Next on list here, we've got news courtesy of Good Morning America featuring the one and only Ye, formerly known as Kanye West, sitting down with them and talking about all things parenting, Kardashians, fatherhood, Donder Academy and more. And there's some cool clips on here that I want to kind of focus on, but let's just play this one and we're going to go through some of the things that Kanye said because I thought some of the stuff was absolutely hilarious. First things first though, visually, I'm feeling the beard. I really am feeling the beard. I'm feeling him kind of really leaning into this sort of uh, nomad lighting that he has going on. I think he mentioned in the interview, I think it was with um, Drink Champs. He said something like, oh, he just like basically goes and sleeps in people's houses now. His friend's couches or whatnot, stays in various apartments here and there, you know, travels with just one bag, doesn't necessarily change his clothes too often, wears the same sort of stuff again and again and again. And all of it is to kind of focus on his creativity, right? To kind of wear this uniform, um, to kind of go into this new stage of his life, wherever it may be. But I just love it in terms of visually. Um, it has changed up what he looks like and maybe hopefully it will change his perspective and opinions of some things that I think are pretty funny and dumb. But let's play the clip anyway. This is the first clip of, it says here, yeah, apologizes to Kim Kardashian opens up about co-parenting challenges. Let's play this. This is the mother of my children, and I apologize for any stress that I have caused, even in my frustration, because God calls me to be stronger. But also, ain't nobody else gonna be causing no stress either. I it's hilarious, right? He's finally apologizing to this lady. And again, I have no time for that Kardashians in general. I think they're a scourge on humanity. Um, I don't necessarily have a problem with their show, but just think of them as a family and what they promote, um, you know, and the kind of kids that kind of, you know, look up to them. It's just a toxic and dangerous relationship. But again, none of my business. But there's no denying that he did overstep the mark a lot of times, right? He publicly insulted the guy that she was seeing. He depicted him dying in music videos he essentially called um you know kim's mum a pimp um he called the sisters prostitutes like many 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 really insulting things that you'd think sometimes you know there'd be no coming back from but of course if you have kids with a person there always has to be that door open because unfortunately he is also the kid's father so he has to play some role in their family so you have to kind of make it somewhat um cordial but he has said a lot of crazy stuff about Kim in the public. And so far, she's basically kept her mouth quiet. Yes, there have been some leaks to the press in terms of making him look a bit crazy and saying certain things. But for the most part, they've kept it pretty tight as a family when it comes to dealing with Kim and Kanye. Maybe it's because they don't know how to deal with him. But I think in general, they've kind of let him kind of spiral and do what he wants in the, in the public and just kind of kept everything behind closed doors in terms of what they were doing. So but to him to now turn around and say what he's saying is funny because I always got the impression from what he was saying i think i said in the podcast myself i got the impression from how he was ranting that he genuinely didn't like kim as a person which is funny because you know he had four kids with a lady he was chasing her for flipping ages there was that whole story that they said or they, they were spinning when they first got together that kanye was always in love with her from the beginning but they were never kind of they were never both single at the same time and all this sort of like you know romantic stuff but now it kind of looks weird because Kanye was basically acting or speaking about her as if like she was some random fought he met in a club when clearly you know she wasn't and also he kind of met her knowing everything about her so the fact that he went to sort of like weirdly change who she was as a person really didn't really add up to me or make any sense but I just find it hilarious that now he's finally like in a weird way, now that he's finally kind of got his way, he's now kind of wanting to be more apologetic and stuff going forward. This is absolutely hilarious, man. I need this person to be least stressed and a best sound <laughs> mind and as calm as possible to be able to raise those children. Do you feel you have a voice as you're co-parenting now? I do have a voice, but I had to fight for it. That hurts you when you, when you have to like scream about what your kids are wearing. And it's just little nuances where there was a parallel to what was, what was happening at Gap, what was happening at Adidas, and what was happening in my home. It was all a kind of a disregard for the voice of something that I co-created. I co-created the children. I co-created the product at Adidas. I co-created the product at Gap. It's funny that he's talking about his children and the products in the same sentence but anyway we move what i find funny as well about kanye in general 
um, especially the more you start to, you know, I think the older you get, I'm again, I'm a huge fan of the guy, but I think when I was younger, I was more wrapped up in the standom of him um, in general. And maybe I didn't really have any other restaurant players in terms of people doing crazy, amazing, inspiring things in the arts and whatnot and fashion design and music. But one thing you notice about him is that he's always had issues with corporations that he's worked with, with brands he's worked with. He's always had issues with, you know, promoters and festivals and whatever it may be, right? talk shows and whatever it may be. And people, and even this situation now, right, with Gap and Adidas, and obviously now with the Kardashians of the family overall, it never quite comes to, it never springs in his head the idea that maybe his own communication style is the reason why he's into, he's always has these issues. Like he had to scream and shout about it, call, he got his way, but couldn't there have been, isn't there, a, isn't there like some sort of, um, could it also be argued that maybe at the beginning, there was a lack of communication or clear communication, effective communication that resulted in having to go to the shouting route. Like, couldn't you just avoid shouting and maybe just spoke, you know, in a um, clear way, in a sensible way, in a mature way that would allow you to have the opportunity to kind of say your piece in terms of how you feel your kids should be raised? Maybe, I don't know. But the fact that that never crosses your mind is funny because he always thinks he's always the victim, right? He's always the champion, always the victor, always wins, always going to be successful but then he's always also the victim like everyone's always doing him wrong which is like a weird way to look about things i guess it's different because maybe he's the one being asked a question so obviously he's not going to look at it from the other point of view but i just find it interesting how you never come to the conclusion that maybe if he's having all these issues with different people people like gap people like adidas um his own family maybe the common denominator there is you kanye but he doesn't think like that there's a parallel and the parallel does touch on discrimination even within your marriage <laughs> yeah how this man thinks he's discriminated by the connections a whole family of women who you know have made it very clear that they only date black men he feels he's discriminated by them <laughs> Discriminate by Adi, that's a company that I don't know, you can't really say that Adi, that's not racist, you can't really say Gap are racist either because they just went clout and you know, whatever it may be, and you know, virality and you know, sellouts online and shit. And you happen to be one of the coolest people in the world, you make great clothes, so they just you know, they tapped you up, and obviously, you're interested in a brand, so they kind of collaborate with you. Discrimination is fucking hilarious. <laughs> How do you move forward now in the fashion industry when they're saying you can't even not only show Yeezy products, but anything bearing that likeness? Oh, we got some new lawyers. We really had to level up and show them, really show them who's, you know, who's the new boss in town. He now plans to sell the Yeezy brand directly to consumers, something he argued about with radio host Sway back in 2013. Or why don't you empower yourself and don't hmm. need them and do it yourself? Ha, like Sway. You take a few steps back to go. You ain't got the answers, water. man. So Sway, almost 10 years ago, said, man, why don't you do it on your own? Was he right? You know what? I will go ahead and say Sway had the answer. Mm. I know people are going to be like, no. <laughs> so social. So, yeah. That's the funny and frustrating part of it, isn't it? And I actually guessed that. I think I tweeted that a while back, maybe a couple of days ago, that maybe Sway did have the answers when I saw these kind of clips of him raging about production and not being happy with what's happening at, at Gap and whatnot. It was pretty clear at that time, maybe, that Sway maybe wasn't right at that moment because what Kanye was talking about in terms of him bringing up Stella McCartney and about production when it comes to fashion stuff, there's clearly something to be had for being linked up with those production companies right or those manufacturers right whatever it may be because they're able to produce or your you know clothes at a really high level and they're able to kind of really um manufacture your vision right they're able to kind of get it out there make it look the way it's meant to look present it to a certain level and you, you and unfortunately all those things are kind of you know they're behind closed doors they're not for the public you can't necessarily google these places they're things that need to be kind of introduced to and whatever it may be behind the scenes blah 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 so all that screaming and shouting did help because it essentially took easy from looking really ragtag to looking how it looks now which looks really polished really clean you might not like you know the kind of aesthetic but you can't deny that the quality of easy clothing is really really good um so clearly it did help but the overall message that sway was sending or was trying to kind of relate to kanye at the time 
was that you should also be looking eventually to get to a point where you just do it on your own because clearly you're the guy that's special you're the one that has the great idea so if that's the case why not just cut out the middleman and just sell directly to consumers or kind of empower yourself to maybe start small not just have a whole line of stuff and then kind of build up incrementally over the time but you know Kanye didn't want that he was infatuated with those brands and those big conglomerates LVMH caring all this sort of stuff talking about what Disney all this sort of stuff you know the kind of white man obsession thing he had going on and eventually you know it, it led him to get bit in his hand or bit in his bum and now he's kind of back with his tail between his legs basically saying you know what maybe you guys are right but the good thing is that he has a bucket load of cash he has loads of resources he has a great team around him and all this experience so clearly i still think he will still end up succeeding because you know he succeeded already in spite of all the hurdles he had just imagine or he's had obviously during the time just imagine now with all the experience he's had and all this profile is gained da, 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 he's definitely going to be doing good things going forward so i think this next evolution of what he is going to be is going to be probably his best stuff ever i think going forward definitely definitely going to be and it's probably going to change the industry overall going forward and like i said in another podcast even though i'm not a fan of some of the stuff the guy talks about or how he kind of goes about it I do also understand that he needs to be that guy that says this type of stuff that kind of is willing to say the uncomfortable truths, who's willing to be this open, be this kind of vulnerable. He's always been like this anyway. He's always kind of, you know, him and Virgil always kind of, you know, really advocated for the saying stuff aloud and learning aloud, learning in public kind of thing. Um, kind of um, what they call it, uh, crowdsourcing opinions and all this sort of stuff, learning in real time. And the good thing about it is that generations to come will reap the rewards of this, right? They're the ones that are going to eat the fruits of all this struggling that he's going through. So um, all in all, it's going to be a good thing. Let's continue to the end of it. Media, you feel, is that more hurtful or beneficial to you? That's one of my favorite questions, this interview. I mean, we can use a car to rush somebody to the hospital or we could use a car and accidentally hit somebody while we're rushing somebody to the hospital. So it's all in how we use it. Do you have a future <laughs> all right, Kanye. political aspirations? Yes, absolutely. All right, so that's basically Kanye. He's got political aspirations. He's said sorry to Kim and the family. Um, he says Sway was right in the end in terms of, you know, empowering himself to, you know, to make his own stuff and not relying on the middleman or the white man to basically make him successful. Um, and he's learned a lot. He's growing. He wants to uh, say so and the way his kids are raised and what schools they go to bloody blah blah but it was a pretty decent interview nonetheless i'm eager to see what the next evolution of yay and yeezy is going to be going forward i am eager 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 